Well, good Monday. I'm Rick Dancer. Welcome to Get Real with Rick Dancer and Friends. And tonight we have a ton of friends. <laughs> we, we, we have so many people, I have them sitting in green rooms off into the Never Never Land. Uh, it's been a really hectic day today, busy day for people, uh, especially teachers um, in Oregon because of the mandates uh, demanding people get vaccinated or you're out. Uh, some had religious exemptions or accommodations, but even those people, it's not really what it sounds like. Uh, the news will tell you, oh yes, they are still on contract, but they're not getting paid and they are um, not working and it could be till April. And in some cases, in some of the districts, uh, they can't even go get another job uh, because they're on that contract. So some people are trying, some people aren't. Um, and thank God the state of Oregon has made it so that anybody 18 with a pulse and can pass a background test, can now be a student teacher or a substitute teacher in Oregon. So at least we know that our children are getting a quality education while all this is going on. Um, we're going to start off our night with the uh, with the news. I've got some teachers coming up to talk. Also, Tina Kotex, um, the House Speaker, is considering having a special session uh, to extend the, um, the uh, lack of evictions for renters. And uh, that's not sitting well with a lot of people, especially landlords who have houses. So we're going to be talking with someone who represents them. And then we're going to give you something to dream about. We have Lonnie and his team on here uh, showing you all those people like me who are looking for something new to do, a new business. And uh, he's the guy who advises you and helps find you a business. If now's the time to dream. If you're out of a job, you might want to think about doing something completely different. Our show is sponsored by Chris Dental Family Dentistry. Um, if you're looking for a dentist who wants to make sure your health is taken care of, despite your vaccination status, he is your man. Um, everybody that goes to him loves the guy. New Leaf Hyperbaric Ch uh, Chamber and uh, Wellness Center with Matt and McCarl over there. Um, if you're having some issues with colds coming up or you have COVID fog, um, dealing with autism, anything like that, Hyperbarics is, has proven to be very effective in these areas. So Matt also is one of our sponsors. Buck Sanitary Service, you know what they do, except you didn't know they bring showers and stuff like that to all kinds of uh, forestry camps. Uh, you, if you have a wedding, they can bring not only the outhouses and the nice fancy bathrooms, but they can also bring showers out to those events. They're a sponsor for us. And Transworld Business Advisor, that's Lonnie. Uh, he's going to be up a little bit later talking to me more about that. So let's kick off real fast with Bill London. He's got a real, lot of news today to put into the show. So uh, let's get Bill on this team. Good evening from the News Radio, 1120 AM and 93.7 FM, KPNW Studios. I'm Bill London. News brought to you by Dr. Michael Bratland of Chris Dendel. So the deadline for Governor Kate Brown's vaccine mandate today and hundreds across the state losing their jobs, not showing proof of vaccination or getting an approved exemption. Now, Governor Kate Brown later expanded that mandate to include healthcare workers and educators on August 19th after making her first announcement on August 10th for state workers. As of last month, more than 2,000 Oregon state workers filed an exemption of those 90% were religious requests. Employers can ask additional questions questions trying to determine someone's sincerity of their religious exemption claim. But lawyers have said that if you start suggesting a religious claim is unreasonable, you're walking into murky and dangerous legal waters. And despite the mandate, Lane County said they did not see an uptick over the past few weeks in first or second doses. They say that most of the people getting their shots right now are primarily getting Pfizer booster doses. Well, a number of parents and students in the Fern Ridge School District supporting their educators and support staff who were laid off today after refusing a coronavirus vaccine by the state deadline. Dozens of community members were at that school picketing outside district offices. The superintendent there, Gary Carpenter, confirmed about 13 staff members are on unpaid leave indefinitely. He said all religious exemption requests they received were approved. The district worked with affected employees to shift work hours and weekly testing options. Still, a bunch of them ended up on unpaid leave. The employees on unpaid leave include teachers, instructors, assistants, custodians, and transportation workers. The same kind of demonstrations were taking place today in Eastern Oregon in Redmond, Bend, and also Lapine. 
Now, this morning, we received a letter on the Chris Dental inbox, that's 1120kpnwgmail.com, that has to do with the vaccine mandates and people being fired from school districts. An individual working for Springfield said, this is not a good morning, Bill. There have been at the very least 30 people fired, not for bad work ethic or failure to show up when needed or because they foobarred something at work. These people have been terminated for not obeying a mandate to invade their body with a drug that appears to work less well than swinging a dead cat to remove warts. I would like to thank the Chapter 4 OSEA union for going to bat for these people. Ellipses, no wait, they didn't. They rolled over and let these people get cornholed. Been a member of the union for more than 20 years. Gone. Did not even fight for these people came out and said, you will comply or else. I'll not name the union president or the underlings of this cowardly lot too afraid to stand up and simply got in bed with the tyrants in HR that will not allow a discussion on the issue or an opposing view. He said, just call me listener 13. As far as other school districts, they're not really giving numbers. They're only giving percentages of those vaccinated makes it a lot harder to say, oh, 30 people, 40 people, 50 people were laid off today, as opposed to saying, well, we had 96.4% of our employees vaccinated. The Oregon National Guard has started to draw down the number of troops deployed to hospitals as the state sees fewer COVID hospitalizations. Governor Kate Brown deployed guard members back in August to help help healthcare workers as they faced a surge of patients brought on by the Delta variant. As of today, there were still about a thousand National Guards, men and women working at hospitals around the state. Well, if you want a good high paying job, become a school bus driver. School bus drivers are becoming a huge commodity all around the state because, well, there's just not enough people to drive the buses. Districts and bus companies have been forced to combine or cancel routes, boost hourly pay, and offer four-figure bonuses to attract drivers. As a matter of fact, in Eugene, parents were notified that rides on nine bus routes are going to be cut starting tomorrow. The district is going to pay those parents 200 bucks a month to figure out how they're going to get their kids to school. Nice. To recruit new drivers, district officials are offering a 25% wage increases and $500 per quarter bonuses for the remainder of the school year. On the top rung, school bus drivers in the Eugene School District make in excess of 20 bucks an hour. In Eugene today, it was a non-school day because the district was preparing for, shall we say, changes that the pandemic and the vaccine mandates have brought. And that'll give parents or gave parents on the canceled routes an extra day to figure out how they're going to get their kids to school. Well, House Speaker Tina Kotek called for a special session of the Oregon legislature on Friday to stave off a rash of evictions as pandemic restrictions expire. It's figured that almost 12,000 renters statewide have applied for pandemic assistance were on the cusp of losing legal protection from eviction because it had taken too long for the state to actually get the relief money to landlords. And when the Oregonian reported Friday that the protections for those renters had expired, Kotek started tweeting, we need, and I'm quoting, we need a special session for legislators to fix this problem. It's not really clear whether Kotek would have the votes to pass the bill, and it's not clear whether Governor Brown will actually call for a special session. Portland Police Chief Chuck Lovell shared a grim milestone over the weekend. Since the beginning of the year, there have been more than 8,000 shootings in Portland. The chief addressed the statistic in statements made on Twitter, calling Portland's gun violence, quote, a terrible problem. He said those shootings are traumatic for the entire community, and this is a substantial jump compared to past years. According to Portland Police Bureau shooting statistics, by this time last year, the city had recorded about 600 shootings. By this time in 2019, there were 300. In all of 2019, there were 380 shootings. In 2020, that number jumped to 900 shootings for the year. And here we are in the middle of October and we've already passed 1,000. 
Lovell says the Enhanced Community Safety Team is working to investigate these cases. Well, while we may be seeing a lot of anti-police sentiment among the left in this country, the Supreme Court today ruled in favor of police officers in two separate cases in which officers were accused of using excessive force against suspects. The Supreme Court struck down rulings from two lower courts that ruled in favor of moving forward with prosecution of the accused officers. The High Court did so by approving the officer's request for legal protection that is known as qualified immunity, which is a legal remedy that's been hotly debated debated and argued about among anti-police activists. The justices overturned a ruling by a lower court to move forward with a trial against two Oklahoma police officers who fatally shot an armed suspect. The second case from California involved a lawsuit against a police officer accused of using excessive force while disarming and handcuffing a suspect. Plaintiffs in each case accuse the officers of violating their Fourth Amendment rights. Now, if a plaintiff launches a civil suit over a violation of their constitutional rights during an interaction with the police, officers can request qualified immunity, which dismisses the case if the officer's use of force is determined to be objectively reasonable. Now, that's according to the Federal Law Enforcement Training Centers. The opinion today said that determining whether an officer used excessive force depends on, quote, the facts and circumstances of each particular case, including the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect posed an immediate threat to the safety of officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. All right. That's a look at some of the stories we're following today. And now it's time for your dose of reality because Rick is going to get real, really real. Here he is being real and stuff. (laughs) Real and stuff. That segment was brought to you by Chris Dental Family Dentistry right here in Eugene. Um, Anything you need done, they can take care of you. He's my dentist. He's my wife's dentist. He's everybody I know's dentist. And he's getting a lot of business because he stands for what he believes in. Our next segment is brought to you by New Leaf Hyperbaric and Wellness Center. If you have not tried hyperbarics yet, you need to get in the tank. Oxygen is really good for you, especially to help your body's immune system, which is what we should be doing, helping our immune system to help prevent us from getting the flu and COVID and anything else that comes along in the winter time. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go really quick. We have some teachers, but I also have some folks in Lebanon, Oregon. I'm gonna bring them in. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Rick, thank you so much for having us. So tell me who you are and what you guys are doing out there today. Well, we are, um, some of us are employees for, well, we're employees for Lebanon School District um, that were fired on Friday. And really what we're doing here today, the rest are just support people that came out from the community and all over Oregon actually. Um, to support us um, and the wrong, um, you know, decisions that Lebanon School District has made. And um, what we're doing is really trying to stand up not only for the people that were fired, but also for um, the people that remain there that had to basically lie on a religious exemption for Lebanon to accept it. And, you know, the thing with that is there's just people that have homes and kids and not everybody was able to be fired from their job and still have their livelihood. Um, And so... Nicole, what does this do to a small town like Lebanon and a lot of rural, I'm sure rural Oregon towns in the same boat, because you guys all know each other. This is like a, you know, is it dividing the town or are people coming together? What's happening? Um, I would say it's dividing um, the town, um, much like just the simple vax or unvax is dividing people, um, country in our entire, in our whole country. But um, specifically in the buildings, what they did is they had pre-termination meetings um, two weeks before we were fired. And then we had to go back to work and work two weeks in order to be fired um, while they posted our jobs for us to see posted while we were still doing our jobs. And so um, there was a huge you know, division and divide. We definitely were all feeling it in the buildings. All right. Nicole, would you thank the people behind you and everything for just getting involved and being part of I think that's what Oregonians are learning is we have to be involved in this stuff. We can't just sit by quietly anymore. Well, and Rick, there's such a thing called integrity and that's what we all need to remember uh, and freedom when we're going through through things like this. So they might've taken away a few things, but they did not take away our integrity and we're gonna keep fighting. 
I think we're learning. I think like I know my generation, there's a lot of generations between, you know, the Vietnam War and us. We're, we're learning that freedom is not free. That's right. Yeah. All right. All right. Nicole and your gang, thank you for joining us tonight. There you go. That's Lebanon, Oregon. Um, they've been out there all day doing their thing, and we want to thank them for coming on our show tonight. Next segment is sponsored by Buck Sanitary Service, and I've got a couple of teachers here, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. These are Springfield teacher. Paul, I'm going to move you up there because if we bring any graphics in, it covers the guests, and that's so rude to do. If you're going to cover a face, cover Rick's face. Tanya, introduce yourself, and Paul, go ahead. Go ahead, Paul. I am um, a 30-year veteran teacher uh, from Springfield Public Schools, and um, I have recently been laid off because I've not taken the vaccine. Um, that's where I stand right now. So, and, and Tanya? Hi, I'm Tanya Reichenberger. I'm an elementary school teacher. I've been in the Springfield School District at the same elementary school for the last 12 years. Um, of my 21 year career. I most recently in the last three years, two and a half years, um, have been working as an instructional coach. So I work with the teachers in the school building, um, specific to that school building to reach their goals and, um, you know, raise the standard for kids and, um, and all the things. So I also have been put on unpaid leave with an accepted exception, religious exception, I've been placed on unpaid leave, which activated today, as Paul knows. So we worked the day uh, today. And at the end of the day, we were asked to um, submit our badge, key, uh, computer, and clean out our rooms. Um, and that is part of unpaid leave. So how long is unpaid leave go for in Springfield? You want to answer that, Paul? Or uh, Well, actually... The, the wording is a little bit hazy. Uh, the district has said uh, once the mandate is lifted, um, there's also some wording that we will have to get vaccinated one way or the other. Uh, but whenever a smooth transition might take place where we can actually get back into the classroom, uh, many of us believe that that will not be, though, until next school year um, and that there will be a vaccine mandate coming down the pipe anyway. Uh, so. That is a that's a very um, gray area right now, Tanya. I don't know if that's if I'm speaking the truth. Yeah, and I actually pulled up my letter, Paul, because I was like, yeah. I need to remind myself what that said. And it mm -hmm. actually does say um, it does say through the next school year. So right. um, mm -hmm. so through the position in 2022, 23. So through yeah. June, yeah. Um, yeah. So and I guess so that was the final. That was kind of the final word because it was uh, the language was a little bit hazy there for a while, and yeah. then so we got that directive that it was going to be through to the next year. Now, are you guys both part of the union? Yeah, I, I, I am. I am. I am not. You're not, and Paul, you are. I was. Did they stick up for you? Did they fight for you? No. But aren't isn't that what a union's supposed to do? Like, if you're paying union dues. Aren't they supposed to spot, fight for every teacher and not just the ones they agree with? That is my understanding. And of course, um, our, I'm not mentioning names tonight, but um, the union leaders would probably disagree with me when they mm -hmm. said that they stood up for me. But if I can sort of uh, paraphrase what our memorandum of agreement said from the SEA, from the Springfield Education Association, was that uh, the district would have options um, for accommodations um, and the language said we could wear a K95 mask, we could be tested periodically, uh, but then the last stipulation was that we could possibly be placed on unpaid leave as an accommodation. And of course, mm -hmm. everybody in their right mind knows that an accommodation is not unpaid leave. Uh, so that's basically what the what the memorandum was from the, our own association. Um, they are following that to the nth degree. Uh, and although a few of our union members have stood with us, you know, in rallies mm -hmm. on street corners, mm -hmm. um, really very few have come out in, in support uh, of us publicly. 
So in turn, why, let me play as devil's advocates because I've heard parents mm -hmm. say, well, I'll, I'll give you two things. Two parents mm -hmm. have said, I've heard a few say to me, well, but I don't want my kid in a class with a teacher that's not mm -hmm. vaccinated. Mm -hmm. That's one question. The second one is, why not just get it and keep your job? That's what mm -hmm. I think some people are asking. So I just want you to have the chance to, to uh, answer that those questions. Um, How do you go? Okay, I'll I'll jump in on that one. Um, which and I, and I that's a you know a, a, the reality that we live in right now, and parents are are worried about what they're hearing and um the the fear that's based around you know being around unvaccinated people. I do want to share that I submitted for a religious ex exception, also medical, in that um I have had COVID. I just re I recovered from COVID in August. Um, and I would like to supply my antibody test and um, all the information that would show that natural immunity I, I have. Um, and the the what I was told was that that was that's not recognized as um, being um, immune. The only immunity that Oregon recognizes from Oregon Health Associate, you know, Oregon OHA is vaccine immunity. Um, so and. Wait, but that doesn't that's, that doesn't follow the science, science, does it? Science. Well, and and that's where there I did some good research on this, and I'm sorry, I'm I'm kind of diverting from your question. But Tanya, be really careful when you answer because um, I get censored by the media, by the by the Facebook yes. and all the rest. Okay. Of them. Start telling. Yes. And I'm not I'm not discounting what you're saying. I'm yes. just saying they take me off, and all, it's really funny. Just, all these people come on. They they post articles about their side of the mm -hmm. issue. I try to post articles about other things, and then I get censored. And they go, "How come you don't ever use facts to answer questions?" Well, because I get censored, and you don't. It's kind of a different world that I live in because I'm trying to get all the information out, not just the information that tickles my my behind. Gotcha. gotcha. So, gotcha. um, so tell me this okay. answer. Okay, go ahead. Okay. 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 Gotcha. So, okay. So there is a, a, even in um, the, this new pr proof of, of what immunity means. And then the questions around like, like how much um, immunity would, would count, right? How much antibody, how high would the antibodies have to be to cover? And that's all being researched, right? So we don't, so we don't understand those facts. And so, and I, and I understand that's a case for saying, well, we wouldn't know how to accommodate that because we don't know at what level the antibodies have to be to cover you. Um, so with that being set aside, I think then what it does is um, it just raises questions that violating our constitutional rights, where we're guaranteed equal treatment under the law for bodily autonomy, religious freedom, meta, you know, that um, that's where it, it gets kind of, hazy. But going back to the question about parents um, and parents saying, hey, I don't want my, my students um, with an unvaccinated um, person. And I, I think that it's just the education around that. It's the education around really what that means. And what what do we know now? And as the, as science is changing, the information that we're that we're getting in, but also safety precautions, protocols are put in place. They have been pretty helpful, um, you know, to this point, there's been many people and within the system that are unvaccinated. Um, so, um, yeah, so I don't know if that answered the question about what, what to say to parents, but, but also an understanding that, that, you know, that is a concern. Um, and then also why did, did you say, why didn't I get the vaccine? Let me have, let me ask Paul oh, that Paul. question. Paul yes. answer. Why, yes. if, if somebody sure. just says, yes. why don't you get it and keep your career and, and, yeah. and retire out and get it, get it done. Yes. Paul, that's you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not quite sure. Could you please repeat the question, Rick? So Paul, why, if somebody says to you, why not just get the vaccine and oh. keep your career and not go through all this? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, that's, um, and you know what, is it from a parent's perspective, that is a very good question. And mm -hmm. Uh, ever since, well, ever since I became a teacher, uh, the concerns of parents and students have been forefront on my in my profession. Um, mm -hmm. I would simply say, you know, first of all, there are some religious concerns that that I um, placed on my uh, exception form uh, that really are near and dear to my heart. I'm not going to go into those right now, mm -hmm. not to bore people with them, but just you know, we as 
as we were, this nation was founded on religious mm -hmm. freedom, First Amendment rights, and um, so you can you can argue with somebody till you're blue in the face about stuff like that, and probably never come to an agreement. So I'm not going to even go down that path right now. But I'm claiming those First Amendment rights. But I, I will say, like Tanya, I too was I, I contracted COVID in January, went through the two week ordeal, and just in September uh, tested for antibodies in the hopes that maybe the district would um, uh, allow reasonable accommodations. Uh, and of course, science, that didn't happen. <laughs> allow accommodations yes, for science. exactly and. <laughs> Right. And so we we have all become infectious disease armchair experts mm -hmm. uh, and to to get into an mm -hmm. argument about stuff like this with people mm -hmm. uh, it would be ridiculous. And not only that, but the, the real experts are at odds with each other. Uh, and right. there are so many more mm -hmm. things I could speak to this. But I would say that those are the two reasons um, standing on the um, First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, which is right to privacy, and the Fourteenth Amendment, which says no state shall deny a person equal protection of the laws. I submitted those with my religious exception to begin with, and the district rejected those and and basically required me to state the specific reason why I religiously would want to exempt myself. And so I went I went ahead and played along with that, and and then my um, accommodation, unpaid leave was accepted and that's where it, it remained i have some more things to say about that but i'm going to go ahead and give it back to you okay you guys thank you so much for coming in and talking with us and letting us um, kind of get a feel for this um, i'm sure we're not done and i'm sure there's going to be more time so keep my number close keep uh, our our connector uh keep in contact with him because mm -hmm. i would like to have you guys back as this continues so we can get more deep into it are you are you okay with that Yes. And Rick, thank you so much for offering us the opportunity to share our, our and hear, just hear our, our side and our plight, because I just, we just appreciate you. And, okay. And thank you. That's what it's, that's what we're yeah. all about. Give it a voice. Yeah. Rick, thanks so much for being really community regionally oriented mm -hmm. uh, and being um, sort of a catalyst for the voice of the people. I appreciate that. Yeah. You're welcome. That's what we do. Thanks you guys for being here. I appreciate it. And that is what we do. Um, I got tired of the news business and tired of people telling me what I had to do, what I was going to do. And, uh, I'm not doing that anymore. And, um, yeah, you make some, you make some enemies, but that's their choice to be my enemy. I choose to be no one's enemy. And, um, and that's just how I, how I roll. So if people don't like that, I guess that's just kind of how it's going to be. Um, our next segment, um, we just got so much going on around here. So as Bill said earlier in the newscast, uh, Tina Kotek, the House Speaker, is, uh, I'm going to say threatening, because I could never say that when I was in the news business, but threatening a special session to extend this eviction moratorium for renters relief. Apparently, according to uh, the Oregonian, 12,000, almost 11,900 renters statewide applied and they're still waiting for the relief. And so not only are they getting screwed, but then the property owners who aren't getting that money um, are also having a rough time. So Tara, Why? look I at you. You got the cat, you're all ready to go. So I was walking by Cornucopia one day and Tara, I was waiting for the train outside my office and Tara came running up and said, Rick, we had a few words and stuff like that, but I don't want, we were just, she was complimenting I me, mean, just having fun. And then she said, you know, you, you really, here's what we do. So Tara, tell people what you do and what, why you're here tonight. Hi, thanks for having me. I actually have a little bit of a different um, job than in this realm than most people. I, I predominantly sell foreclosures for, um, you know, for lending institutions. And so my experience with the eviction moratorium is on a little bit different end in that um, I'm representing entities more than actual human beings. Um, at the same time, involved in the industry, several, uh, you know, friends and clients that have rental properties that uh, I'm aware of and can speak about. So what are you seeing happen out there to people, landlords and people who are not getting this money? If they extend this out again through December, what does that do? Whoa, I lost you. 
it is. You there? Yes. Hi. Am I here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're fine. Okay. LSU. You know, it's a problem. Um, the thing is, the state has that money, and I don't know exactly how much they got and how much they've been given out. I've been trying to find the numbers. It's not coming up really easily. They are requiring, in order to get assistance as a landlord, that you agree to only get 80% of what is owed to you. You have to write off the other 20%. And I think a lot of people have the idea that landlords are making a huge profit every month off the renters. And yeah, sure, there are some. Most of the people that I work with, however, they just have a handful of properties and that's not the case. So losing 20% of what you had agreed to rent your property for is significant. It's it's not just like, oh, you know, I guess I just won't buy a, a couple more coffees this week. No, it's a lot of money. Well, and, and what if they took everybody in this room or anybody watching right now and said, okay, um, we're going to take 20% of your, what you make. And we're just going to take that away for a year and a half, maybe two years. And, um, and you're just going to have to bite the bullet. Right. Um, yeah. That's a huge chunk of change for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a lot of money. And remembering that a lot of these landlords don't own these properties free and clear. So they have mortgages that they have to pay. Wow. Yeah. One of the ladies I was talking to earlier, she was out about $12,000 last year and she did get some of it back. One of the tenants, however, had already moved on and they refused to sign the paperwork for her to get the money. So they're just gone. She never gets that money back. And there's really nothing that she's going to be able to do about it. Well, you know, what's kind of frustrating to me too, is, you know, that we, we've got how many jobs out there available right now? There's, I mean, I heard a report today. There's, you know, in the, in the United States, there's all these jobs and, and, you know, what, what did people do before to pay that rent? And mm -hmm. it, you know what I mean? If I was a landlord, you'd feel like, you know, I, I mean, I'm all for charity and helping people through this and stuff like that, but it seems like it's, you're putting it all on one group of people. Um, and at some point we need to get back moving. Like if you were working at the, you know, such and such a laundromat and that's how you paid your rent. Well, maybe we need to be doing that because there's so many jobs and people are not filling them. There are so many jobs out there and every place you go, you see that. And you also not only see the help wanted sign, but you experience the change in customer service and the inconvenience however minor or major it is with the lack of staffing. And so I, I just don't, it's, it's a foreign concept to me to not get out there and hustle. That's a little weird to me. Well, the other problem too, as I've heard in reports is that there is this a whole bunch of money in there and because you know how states operate, um, they didn't get that money out very fast and they were actually trying, you know, trying to get this out, but it, it, they, they didn't get it out very quickly at all. So the, in the renter's defense, they've been sitting there waiting for this renter relief funds and it's still just sitting there. If you've got 12,000 people still waiting and they're in the process, that's ridiculous. It is. And if, you know, if it's a matter of a few days, somebody gets evicted and then they finally figure out how to get that money distributed and that could have saved them from being evicted, that seems pretty ridiculous. Matt Kendall says the moratorium is a fantastic idea and concept, yeah. but boy, it's a huge loophole for renters to really take advantage of things. And it has been. There uh, There was one client I worked with and they had somebody moving out. And as soon as the moratorium started, they rescinded their notice and just didn't pay because they were already on the way out. So it didn't really matter to them how long this lasted because they were already moving. And they're going to get a few months free if they could. Well, I think what too, what people do is they think of landlords as these wealthy, wealthy people. And a lot of landlords I know, I am so glad my wife and I didn't invest in property and have renters right now. I mean, I've, we have thought about it in the past and I'm so glad we didn't do it, but it's a lot of people, this is their retire. I know tons of people, this is their retirement. I mean, that 20%, it's like, okay, you take your budget person who's not paying your rent and you take 20% out of that right off the top of what you're doing. And these people are on a fixed income. That money was bringing in, that property was bringing in money for them. And now what I think is kind of insulting is the state to say, okay, we know we have a problem that people aren't going back to work. So let's make it worse. Let's just extend this even longer. 
um, to make it easier for people not to go back to work. And I'm not I'm not trying to blame renters either, but I'm saying we we need to get back to doing normal things. I mean, at some point, instead of just paying for this. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's there's all that money sitting there. The system, it was online for the landlords to get reimbursed or to apply to get reimbursed. It was very clunky. They had a lot of hard time with it. Documents wouldn't upload. Um, the instant chat thing didn't work quite often. So they aren't to blame either in this. You know, a lot of landlords are, are trying very hard to keep the tenants in place, even accepting the 80% of what they were owed. Um, but the state's website, or however the website was, just very dysfunctional. Um, and then they're they're supposed to oh, notify imagine them. that the <laughs> yeah. state of Oregon with a dysfunctional website sounds like the employment. employment. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they're supposed to be notified when the rounds opened up for applications, and those notifications weren't received by some people, so they didn't know. They didn't submit the request for help, and they're not going to get it. That is just crazy. Pam says, I just don't understand why they didn't pay their rent. They got twice the unemployment. They made more money than seniors on Social Security. I, you know, I, I think sometimes we make it easy for people um, and it's going to it's going to come back to nip us in the butt and or bud, however you want to say it. Uh, so, Tara, now, who do you work? I mean, you work for yourself. But what's the name of your company? If people want to find out more. I own Emerald Valley Real Estate. OK. And thank you for coming up and tapping me on the shoulder because <laughs> this was perfect timing. And Tara really busted her butt to get this to get this happen because she's been really super busy today. Um, so I am happy that she did that, and I really appreciate it. Okay. Also, fix your cats, please. Oh, she's getting a spade and neuter your pets. Please fix your cats. <laughs> That's fix she gets that one. She gets that for free. Okay, yeah. so. I'm going to pull you. Thank you, Tara. Thank you so much. All right. So our other guest is having a little bit of an issue. It's not his issue. It's actually my issue. And so what I'm going to do really quickly here is I'm going to send out another invite to him. See how kind I am. I just I this is how it works. And I'm going to put this into Lonnie and I'm going to send it to you. So, Lonnie, I hope you're out there listening. And uh, otherwise, our other guests, but Brent, I'm going to bring you on. So I want to do this so you're not picking your nose or something. I'm going to warn you. There you go. <laughs> hey, buddy, how you doing? Uh, pretty good. Uh, nice to be here and chat with you. Um, sorry, Lonnie won't be here for now, but I'm sure he'll reconnect shortly. Uh, See if he gets it. So you guys, Lonnie works for Transworld Business yeah. Advisor. So what he does is he he knows businesses in town that are that are selling or people that are interested in selling their business. And we thought this would be a really great tie in because so many people are really you know going, OK, my, my career as a teacher is over for the rest of the year. Maybe this is an opportunity to start dreaming about something different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I lost the race for secretary of state, I took a few months and I just went, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do next? And I didn't have Lonnie to help me. But Lonnie sits down with you and he can help you dream. And Brent, West, you and Lonnie, how do you work and what do you do? You, the the so, nerd stuff. But you yeah, the nerd stuff. We're an IT, a small IT company here in uh, Springfield, Eugene area. And um, we um, service businesses and residential clients um, with their IT needs, new computers, websites, stuff like that. Pretty much anything IT, we handle it. But um, more importantly about my relationship with Lonnie is we were looking for a business to buy and the place we ended up buying was called Practical Computers and it wasn't exactly what we were looking for, um, but Lonnie's out of the box thinking really helped us, um, me and my partners, um, come across something really special and we've really enjoyed the customers and um, uh, many amazing opportunities. And what's really special about Lonnie's approach for things, especially for us, has been our deal with him has been done for over a year. And he's still supporting us. Really? Still working with us. There's no financial benefit in it for him at all. So what did you do before this? Oh, I was an IT professional. I've, I've worked at a couple other places, you know, and really enjoyed the people I worked with. I was just ready to kind of be in control of my own life to a more of a degree. Um, IT is a really rough profession in a lot of respects in terms of hours and other things that you have to do. And I wanted a little more control over my life. So that's why I decided to get into it for myself. 
So <clears throat> Lonnie does, I know like other clients we've had on the show before, it's like, you know, somebody that's doing, uh, the, the last gentleman we had on, he was in a, a business and corporate and just, and all of a sudden Lonnie had a bike shop in town yeah. for sale, like an electric bike shop. Yeah. And this guy is living the dream. I mean, yes. Yeah. Anybody that has their own business, tell them, Brett, you work yep. your ass off. Oh, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, I actually work more than I did before, but I also have the flexibility to go to something for my kids' school, you know, that I didn't have before. I, I missed a lot of things with my kids working for other people. I still work as much as I used to, if not more, but I have flexibility to say, no, nope, I'm going to my daughter's school to drop her off, or I'm going to pick up my kid that day, or I'm going to go to that soccer game. Not that they play soccer. It's just an example, but... You know, um, that's the beauty of um, business ownership. And I'm also trying to provide that freedom to my employees um, as much as I can and work with them to allow, you know, I, I don't want, I mean, not to say that I was poorly treated. It's just the way businesses work. But um, I want to provide a place that people want to show up to. And Lonnie has helped me do that. And I, I just can't overstate how much Lonnie uh, helped me and my partners come across this business. And, you know, we have lunches together every once in a while. We've become friends in all honesty, but um, what it really comes down to is he's supported my dream and he continues to support my dream purely out of the, he just wants the good connections. And uh, he, he's really good at staying in contact. And, you know, I worked with a lot of people that do this type of work before, and I've never seen that type of attention and continued support after the deal was done. He got our money. <laughs> yeah. Well, and <laughs> you know, what's nice, and, uh, uh, you know, and that's the same approach I try to bring with my business is it's, we, we support people's dreams. You know, a lot of business owners think, oh, I've got a computer, I've got internet, my IT's handled. That's not the case. There's a lot more that IT can do for people um, to improve efficiencies and things. And, um, you know, so me and Lonnie, we were talking about it and I'm sad he's not here right now, but we, we support people's dreams and it's about giving people the freedom to um, do what they do best. You know, everybody has a skill set. And, um, you know, I, I used to work with teachers. I, I've worked with a lot of industries over the years in IT and, you know, people would say, oh, should I have known how to do this or that? And it's like, well, yeah, some things aren't too hard, but you know what? You're here to teach the students or you're here to machine that CNC machine. Let me worry about the IT so you can do what you do best. Right. And Lonnie did that for us with the, through the brokerage process. He allowed us to focus on our business and he helped us through the process of buying. Did you ever work at Omnitech? Matt Kendall wants to know. No, I, I have not worked at Omnitech. Um, uh, I, I've worked at a couple other places. I'm not going to, you know, throw names right now. You know, I don't want to. He just know. wanted to know. And yeah. Matt knows Lonnie. So you guys, so I, I thought this is why, and, and Lonnie, if you're out there listening, I'll get you on another show. I'm, uh, it's my business. I can do what I want since it didn't work and you couldn't get on here. We'll do another show with you. It'll be on me. Um, but we're, we're, we're still pushing you out here. But I, yeah, I, I just wanted to say too, Transworld in general was really great with us too. Um, I mean, my main, main, main connection was Lonnie, but the other staff at Transworld that we worked with were fantastic. And if someone's looking to buy a business and wants someone to really care about what they're trying to do, they're a good group of people to work with. And if somebody's looking for IT, I'm guessing it would be a great thing to go ahead and just plug your own business. I like working with people that want to work with me. You know, if um, if it's a good fit, it's great. If if not, that's okay too. You know, um, I have an amazing staff. I have amazing partners. Um, we care about our people. Um, we're all local. You know, homegrown grown people. I, I was raised in the Midwest, but my parents are from Portland. You know, and they actually own a hotel up in Astoria. Um, so we're just. You know, really committed to the area, and do you help do web you develop websites as well? Yeah. Okay, Melissa works with me too, but she has so many. She has so many things going on. Yeah. So, which, which hotel in Astoria? Uh the uh, Astoria Crest Motel. They they bought it like six, seven years ago, and my I, dad had been in the hotel business for thirty years. And, I love know. Astoria. It's one of my favorite places yeah. to go, even yeah. though it's not at the beach, it's near the beach, but it feels such a great town. And when I was a kid, you did not go to Astoria. It was no, like, I know I'm aware. I, I actually lived there for a short time. Um, and I loved it up there as well. And, uh, it, it was really, uh, it's a beautiful town and there are some amazing breweries and other things to see up there. And, uh, it's really worth going up and checking out. 
Yeah. So you guys, you know what you should do? Um, everybody on here, because what will end up happening, this will go to anybody who has commented over here. And we've had close to a thousand people on here. So yeah. if you have a job available and, and you are looking for an employee, would you put it in the comment section, make it brief so people can see it, but how to get a hold of you. And, um, and then I put Lonnie's phone number up there earlier. If you guys are just at a point and don't get so down. I know today's a bad day for a lot of people. Hey, Brett, I'll see you later. Thank you for being here. I'm going to close yep. these guys. Out. Thanks for doing that for us and filling them in there. So you guys, yeah, it's been a hard day. And I know a lot of you guys are really struggling because um, I've been there. We, we wrap our image and our idea of who we are um, a lot of times into what we do. And first of all, you're not what you do. Um, and I know it's really hard when you've had a career for a long time and then I got to choose to get out of mine. But when you're when you're moving out of that, um, it's hard because you have to you've always seen yourself one way as a teacher, as a news anchor, as someone like that. Um, but sometimes by taking a job um, that's just different and completely out of the realm of what you might think you're going to do. Um, it doesn't have to be a career. It can be a job to find a career. Um, but there's a lot of you can you can kind of find yourself. You know, I think I got lost in my world of being a television news anchor and I lost me and politics got me out of it real fast. And now I'm doing what I love. Um, and you sometimes have to go down a rocky road to get there. So I'm not trying to give you a bunch of advice because um, I am not about advice, but um, it we understand uh, some of us understand where you're at and it's, it, it is a hard thing and it's not going to go away fast, but um, it will get better and don't stop fighting and don't start speaking out, stop speaking out. And for everybody out there, um, one of the, I was talking to uh, Dr. Bratlin today and Michael and I were having a conversation and saying, you know what? Um, I think it's time people join hands and we just, you know, it, yeah, people are going to hate you and people aren't going to like the fact that you're using your voice because people like to control the conversation and they think that they're right and they're scared. But for the rest of us, we need to start saying, no, enough. You don't get to do that. You don't get to push me that far. I'm done. And you can't push that far anymore. And if you don't agree with that, push the other way. But don't you dare try to shut me up. You hear me? Don't try to shut me up and don't bully and go behind my back and try to say mean things and snatchy things. I don't say that about you and you don't get to say that about me. Put on your big boy or girl pants, act like an adult and just be part of the community. But remember your mandates, you can mandate for you, but you don't get the mandate for me or any of the other people on here. So that's how it works. We are still free. If you want to give up your freedom, you go ahead and give up your freedom. But I'm not giving up mine and I'm not giving up my voice. And that's just the way it's going to work. I want to thank Chris Dental Family Dentistry for sponsoring our show. New Leaf Hyperbarics and Wellness Center. Bucks Sanitary Service and Transworld Business Advisor. All of our clients believe not everything I say and don't agree with everything, but they believe that you deserve to have a voice. And uh, so we ask that you honor those clients as you go. So um, tomorrow, let me look. Oh, tomorrow, this is American Cancer Society uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month and it's men, real men wear pink. Um, I think Matt Kendall's one of those guys, but they're doing a big thing tomorrow night. Um, kind of like a telethon. It's sort of like that. They're going to be on online reaching out. So we're going to have them on ahead of time talking about what's going on. And uh, that's sponsored by Pro Priority One Heating and Air Conditioning. And you guys know they're like huge sponsors of the American Cancer Society. Wonderful people over there. And then Elements Health Club of Lane County, they're sponsoring. Kim Sark will be here with us and she's going to give us some health tips. On Tuesday, we do health tips because despite the fact that COVID, um, you know, I know the mask is so important and uh, social distancing and all that stuff. But for some reason, our health experts never talked about most of the people that are really getting really sick and dying from this are not in good health. 
Hmm. So they never did a campaign about getting back to your healthiness. So we're doing that. We're going to take that on ourselves about how you can get healthy as another way, probably a super good way, maybe a better way of preventing COVID is to get your immune system going. So Kim's going to be here to talk about that. And then we'll have priority one. And then, of course, Bill London will be here to do our news. So the best thing you guys can do for this for us is share this on your page. That really, really helps us. Just right now, just hit share. It goes right to your page and then other people can see you and see what we're talking about because the social media giants tend to throttle us back a little when we get going like this. We do pay to boost it, but they throttle us back because they don't like everything we're talking about. And if you guys, if I'm never not on here and I've been pulled from the, the platforms or anything like that, go to rockfin, R-O-K-F-I-N.com. Just look up Rick Dancer. It's Get Real Raw with Rick Dancer. And I'm posting more stuff on there. That's where you'll always find me. These shows go on there a day late, but they're on there. And then I put other material on there that is a little sensitive for some of the social media giants. So we put that stuff on there because over there, I can say whatever the hell I want to. So if you want to find out what I really think, it's over there. This is pretty much what I think. But over there, I can get over the edge just a little bit more. All right. So share it. Have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow night for Priority One Heating and Air Conditioning and Elements Health Clubs Lane County to talk about health and, well, breast cancer is health too as well. All right. Have a good night. See you later. Thanks.